my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I might be just a wee bit excited because look at this. Look at this. Do you know what this is? <gasps> this is a box from Marie at Prometheum Sewing Machines and Jen at Sewing Machine Rehab. And you know, those two ladies worked on my featherweight. They have transformed the Duchess, that is my featherweight's name, the Duchess, they have transformed her into a ruby beauty. And so we're going to open it together. I, okay, so I don't do that many unboxings of things. So, you know, I might be a bit dorky at this, so you're going to have to bear with me. But the box, they packaged it so nicely. Look at this. All, it's huge. This is huge. The featherweight is probably like here, you know, <laughs> sitting in the middle of this. Uh, so they sent me a little, a little card. So I've got, ah, okay. So I'm going to, I think, I think you can see. Yeah. Yeah. On my monitor, I can see that you can see they've, they package it. So when you ship your, uh, your sewing machine, they, they, if you, if you let me backtrack one second, uh, because some of you may not realize that I had a black singer featherweight. Let me just show a picture. I've had this featherweight for a while because it was given to me. Um, my mother-in-law purchased it to use when she went sewing. She had purchased it from some guy she knew who did antiquing. And so it has no family history whatsoever. Madge used it for a little while. And when um, she was kind of not going to be doing that anymore, she gave it to me. And I've had it probably four years. <sighs> And I started thinking that, you know, I really had always had this dream of having a red singer featherweight. And I sort of put that out here into the universe of the internet, of YouTube. And one of our lovely uh, quilters here in the community watched um, Marie's channel. Uh, so she, Marie does paint sewing machines. She also does a bunch of other stuff with vintage sewing machines. The same with Jen. They both work with vintage sewing machines. And so Marie and Jen partner on a lot of projects and they contacted me and said they could offer this service if I'd be interested in working with them. So I'm like, yes, it's like took all the guesswork out of everything. They are both super professional. Jen is the mechanic. She takes apart the machines, um, cleans them, rebuilds things that needs rebuilt. Marie is the uh, magic painter. <laughs> she will um, sand them down, repaint them, put the decals on, uh, put any other fancy decals you might like. And they do this for all types of vintage sewing machines. And so, I shipped my featherweight off to them and the other day they said she's ready to come home and I've seen a few sneak peeks uh, so I have I've have a little bit of an idea but I have not seen it all together so <gasps> it's exciting so there's there's paper now I'm just going to throw this stuff on the floor <laughs> so you know like ah so it's just going to go down here on the floor okay so now I can see there she is there is there is the duchess all right, and she's very well padded. You can see in here too that they package the corrugated um, packing material so that she could be beautifully uh, nestled in here. Okay, so I, all right, so I cannot pick it up at this angle. I need to put it on the box on the floor. I don't have the the strength at this position. I've got to lift it high and lift it out of here. I can't grab it, so I'm going to put it on the floor a second. So I've just pulled it out. I should have taken before I pulled her out, but this is the packing, how it all comes packed back to you. So, so this piece totally cushioned in here, your machine, whichever one they work on for you, your vintage machine will be packed beautifully. So here it is. Here is the packaging around her. Now I want to remind you that uh, when this goes uh, to be worked on, I don't send any of the extra parts, none of the, you know, the, um, the, all the different little parts that go with the machine. It's just the base machine. That's what they're, they're working on. And so like the cords and all that stuff, I don't, I don't send. And so I can't just sort of plug it in immediately. I'll have to get all this stuff out, but we're going to take a look at her. Okay. Okay. Pat, stop talking, right? You all. <laughs> I have a lot of patience for this kind of stuff. Actually, I'm not the kind of person who has to kind of rip right into it. 
which is good since it's been at the house here a few hours before I could get to to the point where I could film for today's video but I am filming the day that it arrives which I think is pretty good although okay I'm gonna talk to you again <laughs> <laughs> if I had to, it could sit for a day or so in my house and I would not open it. I don't know. I'm a weirdo, right? Just total weirdo. Okay. Know that. You follow a weirdo who can wait. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I know that Jen sewed on it to um, uh, test it and she said she left the piece in here. They sew clothing primarily, the two of them. They are garment makers and that is their kind of their gig. Okay, I know. Isn't she pretty? You can see a bit of the red. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, Marie did such a fantastic job. I had a few sneak peeks of it in progress. So I saw how the red was coming out. And I have one little decal that I asked Marie to do for me because I thought, you know, it needs to be a little bit special just a little bit special and I chose to have the gold um, the gold scroll work okay oh my goodness oh my goodness wow wow look at this now there's uh, some stuff in here some little parts so I'm just gonna put that to the side here she just did a little sample so she could you know she the potholder show me just to run off the stitches, work on the stitches. Wow, how beautiful. So in here is the part that goes up at the top. That's uh, the, the pin spool. So to make it easier to transport that that is in here. But look at this, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm going to move that here to the side. And see, lifts up lifts down and then I had a little decal put on because I thought I just wanted the Duchess to have a little bit of spiffiness so I put a little uh, found a little heart we uh, worked with Marie worked with Marie and we looked around at you know what I said I'd like something with a heart and just a sort of you know like for the royalty that she is oh my goodness this is so beautiful and of course she's been um, rewired and all this, the new stuff cleaned, everything cleaned up. Look how clean, holy moly, look how clean. Okay, let me just unwrap this a second. Let me just turn, let me just, and I'll get back. So here is the uh, little, the, the spool, the spool thing. So I just need to get a screwdriver and uh, put that on top. There we go. Look how beautiful she is and so clean. And the paint is so gorgeous. The paint is just gorgeous. Love this red. Oh, and we got like a fancy new light under there too. Love the red. Jen's, um, I mean, Marie's decals. Marie putting all the decals back on and Marie did all the painting and it is just fantastic. Fantastic. Got a little, all the knobs, everything is tip top shape just beautiful oh here you want to see the scroll work so mine does have scroll work i have to go look up the year i forgot what year i forgot what year she is you know like because i don't know maybe because it doesn't have any family history it isn't like now i feel like it's mine now it's mine before it was just like well it was just some old machine my mother-in-law found uh, <laughs> You know, I just didn't really, and I couldn't use it because I knew, Greg had said the wiring wasn't that good. And so, um, you know, it really needed rewired. So, um, yeah, let me go find out what year she is. I had to go get the book. I have to go get the note I have in the box. So I found the little sheet. I looked up on the Featherweight um, Sewing Machine website for this serial number. Um, it was made September 16th, 1946. And that year it said there were 20,000 of these made. Uh, so that is when mine was done. So exciting, so exciting. So I will have to um, get out all the little parts that go to make it run, uh, like the foot and the, the um, cord and all of that stuff. And then in a few days I will uh, do a little demo, <laughs> sew on her and uh, keep her here in the room with me.
<laughs> okay, so we have some other stuff to work on now. I hope that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, my, my unboxing skills might not be the very best, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> So let's go to the second part of the video today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's a little hard to stay focused now doing that first, but I can do it. I can do it. I can stay focused. <laughs> so I have on the calendar that we will work on the Moda bags, the little drawstring bags. Let me show you a picture. The website So Lux, uh, the YouTube channel, the designers there took the Moda, um, spell it with, uh, spell it with Moda alphabet and also a few blocks that they had and added a draw, added them to a drawstring bag that they designed. And the pattern is free, not only for their bag, but for the alphabet. Now, some of you may have bought this book years ago, this little booklet, and that has all of the alphabet in it, but now it is free as a PDF. The PDF is free. So if you bought the booklet, you are paying for, you know, the printing of that, but the alphabet is free and the little blocks are free and the pattern is free. It's all together in one unit. You can link to, to it at the description box or at my website today. Um, and if I think of it, I'll put it on the project pages, like projects we're doing. So to do the drawstring bag, let me just show you my fabrics. I had purchased this a long time ago and let me just show you who it is in case you have a friend who loves crows and you want crows on pink. So this is the fabric line, Drop Dead Gorgeous from Paintbrush Studio. Um, and I bought it maybe a year or so ago. Uh, and my friend loves crows very, very much. So I thought this would be a cute bag and I'm gonna make her bag. Now I wanna do a star rather than her initial. Um, so you could do an initial, like the initials are, these are eight inch blocks, by the way. So here are the, you know, spell it, the spell it letters, all the different letters. If you want to do an initial, I am going to do a star. I'm going to just do this star and I'm going to have uh, star points in my drawing room. So there'll be star points in this. And then I will do the little inside here, you know, around the, a crow. So I'll center a crow and then frame it with the hot, the little bit of hot pink there. So, and then I don't know if how much pink there'll be of this, but if there's enough, I'll just do the inside of the drawstring bag pink, and then probably the um, the strap, you know, to close it in black. So first of all, we need to make the block. First thing I have to do is a center, and that's a four and a half inch square. And I want to get one crow right in the middle because there's going to be frames around it. And so, uh, I'm going to have to go to this one because the other ones are all too close to the edge. Let me see. Ah, that one actually is a little off center. If I, I kind of eat into that salvage a bit. So ah, I think I can do it. I'm just going to cut it and see. I'm going to cut it and see if I like it. So that way I don't have to be chopping over into the middle, which is always a plus. That way it's a lot less waste. This, um, whatever you're putting in the middle, whether you're doing the letter or one of the blocks is not that big. So here we go. So I've got, I've got this at four and a half. We'll see what it looks like. And okay, so there's the four and a half. Now I am going to audition, so that'll be the middle of the block. So I am going to audition the other fabric where, oh, here it is. Okay. So I need two, two and a half inch squares for them. And then I'm going to fold them there and audition it. That way I know if I'm covering up the crow too much, because I do not want to do that. Um, so I can do two at a time, four and a half plus, okay, not four and a half, two and a half. Don't listen to me. Do not listen to me. And so I am cutting because the auditioning is so nice. I know I'm going to use these, but I'm not going to have to sew it to be sure that that center is correct. I can just go ahead and put everything down and I'll get some pins. So basically it, ouch. Ouch, I stuck myself. Okay, so here we go. Looks like this. 
looks like this. And these foam boards, you can just stick right into them, no problem, no problem. And we have here, so this will be, here we go. All right, I like it. All right, so he's okay. He's not gonna get chopped off. I'm not sure I like that pink though. There's gonna be the black star. I, I don't like that shade of pink. I know likey, I know likey. Okay, I'm gonna get another pink. Plan B, because I actually had thought about doing this before using the drawing room, the sort of darker prints, and then uh, these can go in my two and a half inch square bin. So with the pinks, no waste. But I think I'm going to use another piece of drawing room that's for these guys. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Unless I switch that and these will be the star points. Well, I don't think so. I think they want the star points, the more muted, you know, like the tone on tone one. Okay, there is another pin somewhere here and I don't see it. So let's grab another one. Oh, there it is, now I see it, of course. Of course, now I see it. Oh, let me fix that one. Okay, so there we go. Okay, I like that better. I like that better. So the star points then will be the black and then this will be the surround of the crow. So that crow works. All right, what I will do is make this block. Here are the parts. You've got two and a half inch squares, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles and more two and a half inch squares. And these guys make the star points. So they will be like this. And I'll just, I'll just tack this one down so you can see. So here will be the star point. And I will go ahead and now I will sew this block up and then I'll have that part done for the uh, draw bag, drawing, drawstring bag. So here is the middle block or the block for the middle of the drawstring bag. Now, what I'm gonna do with the drawstrings, oh, please, if you haven't met Duchess, here she is. Here she is in all her loveliness. I just had to have her here at the end. <laughs> oh, okay, so anyways, what was I saying? <laughs> I'm very distracted. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, I'll do more drawstring bag. I think I'll just keep working on this one. And I had it for, ever, for like next Wednesday as well on the calendar. And so maybe I'll make a second one. I don't know, but I just think like, I'll just work through it, um, you know, probably work after this finish this video is all done I'll probably just start filming for the the bag part but anyways there's the middle and I love how the how, I love how the crow is my friend will be so surprised and I don't think she watches these videos so <laughs> just, she won't know she won't know okay I have the breakfast club supply list and layout this is our um, it's gonna be done, done on Wednesday it's an applique it's all applique except for the setting is not applique uh, and it is breakfast foods that's what it is at little applique breakfast foods and they're small blocks and they're easy applique <clears throat> applique and I'll be doing fusible applique by machine so when you download this you get the supply list and the pattern um, the supplies you know it's just some background and use a lot of stuff you have but I am going to think play a lot with this bundle here which is called Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops by Basic Gray, link is in the description box and at my website. Uh, and I have a, a project page already done for Breakfast Club. It's kind of goofy, kind of fun. I'm hoping you'll join in. I'm gonna give some ideas of, you know, you could make one block for like a pot holder. You could do, do some different things with the applique. So I'm gonna talk about that like each week of this. This'll be on Wednesdays. And then it'll also be on Wednesdays once we start the pieced quilt, uh, what's in your closet. But that is like the third Wednesday in January, that one starts. So this one will start first and it's gonna be fun. I've wanted to do something like this for a very long time. Um, our Laura, our ambassador, she kind of encouraged me. Well, she did encourage me. Uh, she and I might be the only ones making this. Oh, except Kendall might make it too. <laughs> I think he's gonna take pity on us. He's gonna sew along with us as well. <laughs> also, Kendall's making the bag over on his YouTube channel. So Kendall's YouTube channel, he's also doing the bag, I'm pretty sure. So you just wanna be sure you're subscribed to his channel so you always get notifications with what he is doing. But um, yeah, this is called Fruit Loops. Breakfast, Fruit Loops, yeah, 
of course. And I'll probably go diving into my stash as well. Even if I don't use maybe what's in the stash, just go looking for things, breakfasty kind of things. Anyway, you want to go lo download this. And if you've not done any applique, but you've been curious about it, maybe you'll make a block or two and do something, you know, fun like a pot holder or a mug rug, um, something, something you know, along those lines, something maybe for the center of your kitchen table. And we are at, what is that? What is that? 106,000 for my YouTube channel now. So I will switch this out. Our friend made this for me. Oh, I, the tape's on the back. Oh, boogers. Okay. Oh, there we go. It came off. Uh, wait, 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 wait for it. Okay. There we go. There we go. Ta-da. And so I will hang that one back up. It's because it's fun. There's the 100,000 plaque from YouTube there hanging on my wall because it's, it's kind of a big deal, kind of a big deal. Um, so when we get to 110, maybe I'll have to do something. Maybe I'll have to give a quilt away again at 110. We'll see, we'll see. So I am, you are gonna see more of the Duchess. Uh, the, du the Duchess was painted by Marie at Prometheum Sewing Machines and she, the mechanics of it, the guts of it were refurbished by Jen of Sewing Machine Rehab. They both are amazing um, mechanics and painters and they will work on your machines as well. You can go to their website and see the type of things that they do. Vintage machines are all about vintage machines. So if you wanted to paint one of yours up, if you've wanted to get it working order again, something that's not in working order, um, or you're not even really sure about it, contact them from their um, YouTube channels and they will help you out. I know a few of you have done that already, which is so very exciting. So we're gonna talk about this machine again uh, in a few days when I'll fire her up and sew on it. And uh, that's so exciting, so exciting. Okay, oh, so a lot of stuff today and I'm very distracted. <laughs> so I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.